How would you feel about a pause, about a delay to our leaving the EU if it's not been possible to negotiate a deal in the time that we have left before the end of March? Well, of course, that would be absolutely appalling. And people up and down the country would be furious that our civil servants and government have deliberately ignored the will of the people. What we've just heard from Lord's, Lord Kerslake is part of the deliberate negativity from the civil service who are looking to soften people up in order to extend Article 50. And it's just completely unacceptable. We've heard, though, from two European senior ministers this week saying they think that their chances are no better than 50-50 of us being able to get a deal by the end of March. Uh, do you understand in those circumstances why people consider the possibility that they may have to extend it rather no, than crashing out with no deal? Not at all, because look, f forget this no deal language. We will move to a world trade deal, which of course is how over 50% of our exports are traded, and it works rather well. Most countries in the world operate under world trade rules. So uh, let's, well, no, let, let's most countries leadership. in the world operate under WTO rules in some areas, but not exclusively. In fact, almost no developed countries operate exclusively under WTO. WTO rules. We don't have a trade deal with the United States, but in over 20 areas we have specific bilateral deals. We don't just operate on WTO. Well, WTO is the operating system that we work under. And given that we have a sensible arrangement now with the European Union, if the European Union tries to put in place barriers that are discriminatory against the United Kingdom, they will be in breach of WTO rules, and we should make it very clear that we will sue them. But the it's not just our trade with the EU, is it? It's, once we leave the EU, we'll no longer be party to the bilateral trade deals that they have with many other countries and, as well. And that's the, in a sense, Sarah, that's the advantage, actually, of having a relatively short short time frame now to get these negotiations done. It concentrates the mind, it focuses attention. And frankly, if the civil servants are saying that there's not enough time, it's all too difficult, they can't do it, then actually they should step aside and let us private sector, competent business Brexiteers, come in and do the job because we know we can. I'm sure they'll take you up on that if needs be. Richard Tice, thank you very much for that.